A very warm welcome to all. Today, I, Ria Khanna, a legal intern under Lexus and Company, am here to give a case analysis on my topic, S. R. Bombay versus Union of India in 1994. Now, let us understand what is this case of S. R. Bombay and why is it quoted so often. S. R. Bombay was the chief minister of the Janata Dal government in Karnataka between August 13, 1988 and April 21, 1989. His government was dismissed on April 21, 1989 under Article 356 of the Constitution and President's rule was imposed in what was then a mostly common mode to keep opposition parties at bay. The dismissal was on the grounds that the Bonmai government had lost majority following large-scale defections engineered by several party leaders of the day. Then Governor P. Venkata Subaya refused to give Bonmai an opportunity to test his majority in the assembly, despite the latter presenting him with a copy of the resolution passed by the Janata Dal Legislation Party. What happened then? Bonmai went to court against the governor's decision to recommend President's rule. First, he moved to the Karnataka High Court, which dismissed his writ petition. Then, he moved to the Supreme Court. The case, which would go on to become one of the most cited whenever hung assemblies were returned, and parties scrambled to for a government, took almost five years to see a logical conclusion. On March 11, 1994, a nine-judge constitutional bench of the Supreme Court issued the historic order, which in a way put an end to the arbitrary dismissal of state governments under Article 356 by spelling out restrictions. Now, let us understand what did the judgment say. The verdict concluded that the power of the president to dismiss a state government is not absolute. The verdict said that the president should exercise the power only after his proclamation, that is, imposing his or her rule, is approved by both the houses of the parliament. Till then, the court said the president can only suspend the legislative assembly by suspending the provisions of the constitution relating to the legislative assembly. The dissolution of legislative assembly is not a matter of course. It should be resorted to only when it is found necessary for achieving the purposes of the proclamation, the court said. In, case, in the case, both houses of parliament disapprove or do not approve the proclamation, the proclamation lapses at the end of the two-month period. In such a case, the government which was dismissed revives. The legislative assembly, which may have been kept in suspended animation, gets reactivated, the court said. Also, the court made it amply, amply clear that a presidential proclamation under Article 356 is subject to the judicial review. This case put an end to the arbitrary dismissal of state governments by a hostile central government. And the verdict also categorically ruled that the floor of the assembly is the only forum that should test the majority of the government of the day and not the subjective opinion of the governor, which is often referred to as the agent of the central government. The chief minister of every state who has to discharge his constitutional functions will be in perpetual fear of the acts of proclamation falling on him because he will not be sure whether he will remain in power or not. And consequently, he has to stand up every time from his seat without properly discharging his constitutional obligations and achieving the desired target in the interest of the state, this court said. When was the verdict's impact first seen? In one of the first instances of the impact of the case, the A.B. Vajpayee government in 1999 was forced to reinstate a government it dismissed. The Rabri Devi government, which was sacked on February 12, 1999, was reinstated on March 8, 1999, when it became clear that the central government would suffer a defeat in the Rajya Sabha over the issue. And later, Whenever the case of a hung assembly and the subsequent exercise of government formation came up, the Bomai case would be cited, making it one of the most quoted verdicts in the country's political history. Thank you so much. That is all for today's video.